In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to read a friction loss chart, and we're going to go over all the different kinds of data that's available there. But I want to show you how to properly read it, and this way we can really see the relationship between flow, velocity, and pressure loss, because all these things are tightly interwoven in water hydraulics, and it really takes a nice understanding of this to be able to go out there and do your job. If you don't quite understand these things, you're going to make some mistakes on pipe selection, part selection, etc., especially when installing a system, and that where it, that's where it can go wrong the most. So let's take a look here, and hopefully you have downloaded the PDF from Udemy here for this course and are going through and doing the fill-in blanks. But if you don't have this that has a an example friction loss chart in here, and, and what you're looking at basically is a chart that I've cobbled together from several different sources. If you get a set of friction loss charts from the Irrigation Association or from Rainbird or from Hunter Industries, and Hunter has a nice download for you on the site there, and hopefully you'll click on the link and, and get you a copy of that. But as you go through and take a look at these friction loss charts, in the heading, there's going to be several different things, you know, several different pieces of information here, and let's start going through these. On the upper left-hand corner of the heading there, you see highlighted in yellow, that's the class of the pipe that we're looking at. So that coupled with the data to the right, which is the type of pipe that you're dealing with, the type and the category, we'll see that we're dealing with class 200 IPS PVC plastic pipe. So the IPS, as we've learned in a previous lesson, stands for iron pipe size. And the class 200, that refers to the class of pipe that it is, but the 200 refers to the maximum operating pressure. And as we look further down, there's another indicator. Well, let's go ahead and look at it now, and that's below that, the SDR21. That's highlighted in green, and if we look at that SDR category, we see that that's class 200 pipe. So there's a couple of different ways of getting at that information, and what we also can determine from that SDR is that it's got a 200 PSI rating across all sizes. If you remember what we learned before about standard dimension ratio, that means that the pressure rating is the, si is the same across all sizes of pipe. If you look to the right in the pink, you'll see the C rating. And what that refers to is the inner smoothness of the pipe. For instance, copper is going to be smoother than galvanized steel, so you're going to have different readings on this, but it'll never mean anything to you, and you'll probably never use that data unless you move on into a very higher level of design. And even then, it's a very high level of design for commercial properties or agricultural that you need to know some of this information. You'll also see a range of sizes that this chart is okay for, from three-quarter inch to five inch in this case. And across the bottom, and you'll almost always see this printed on any friction loss chart, is that the values that we're looking at here in the friction loss are per 100 feet of pipe. So if we look at a figure here and it says it has 10 PSI of pressure loss, that's 10 PSI for 100 feet of pipe. So if you had 50 feet of pipe, then you would cut that amount of pressure loss in half, you know, and all the way down the line, because a lot of times you'll have to figure out short sections, like a 10-foot section of pipe before it turns and goes into something else. So always be aware that those values are for 100 feet of pipe. There's also some other data that you might may find there, and it's the ASTM specifications. You'll never need to know that or deal with it as an irrigation technician. But let's go on down to the body of the chart here. And it's got three different pieces of information in the chart itself, but kind of the heading when you get into that also gives us some more information. Let's take a look at that. For instance, the nominal size. Nominal means in name only. So if we look at a three-quarter inch piece of pipe, if we got out a measuring caliper and measured it, it's not exactly three-quarter inches. The same with one inch or inch and a quarter or whatever. Let's say a one-inch piece of pipe, if you had a measure and tape out, it's not going to measure exactly one inch. If we look here at the chart, 
we'll see that the pipe's outer diameter for one inch is 1.315 inches. But these are nominal sizes so that we can refer to them, you know, in a roundabout way instead of, hey, giving me some of that uh, 1.315 inch pipe. Right, so it's kind of you know uh, rounded down for purposes here, but just want you to know. And as we look at these values here below the nominal size, you can see that the average inner diameter and these are outer diameter controlled it means on a PVC pipe we want the outer diameter to be as perfect as we can because that is the tolerance between the pipe and the fitting that it's going into. So if you had some variation on that, then you would end up getting a whole lot of pipe and fittings that didn't quite match up. And you also have the average wall and minimum wall. You know, we're talking about PVC pipe here, but if we were talking about polyethylene, it would be a bit different because you can get polyethylene in several different sizes and different maximum operating pressures, but you'll only get one friction loss chart for polyethylene because it's inner diameter controlled. All of the different kinds that you'll find, whether it's a thick or thinner wall type of polyethylene pipe, the inner diameter is going to be the same so that it has a proper tolerance onto the barb fittings. Now the outer diameter may change but it's the inner diameter on polyethylene that we're talking about. But so let's go ahead and look down the left side of this chart, and what we'll be seeing is the flow rate. And that's either the actual flow rate that you can measure or the desired flow rate that you want going through a particular piece of pipe. So let's look down and find five gallons per minute, and let's follow that across into the three-quarter inch column to the right. Now we'll see the velocity, and we'll also see the amount of PSI that's lost per 100 feet of that 3 quarter inch pipe. So the velocity is 2.46. That means that water is flowing through that pipe. If you're getting 5 gallons per minute through that pipe, it's flowing through that pipe at 2.46 feet per second. And the friction loss that you'll incur per 100 feet of pipe is only 1.33 PSI of loss per 100 feet of pipe, and that's next to nothing. But let's look further on down. What if we tried to get 20 gallons per minute through a three-quarter inch piece of pipe? Is it possible? Well, the chart says it is, but you always get flow at the expensive pressure, right? And no matter whether it's just a pump or a pipe Whatever it is, the water is going to attempt to flow to the amount of the openings that you provide, the number of heads that you put on a zone. It's going to attempt to match that flow at the expense of pressure because what happens is the more flow is going through that pipe, the faster it goes, but the faster it goes, the more turbulence it causes on the inside of the pipe. So if we look down this chart and if we were trying to flow 20 gallons per minute through a three quarter inch piece of pipe, what we'd be getting is 17.29 PSI of loss per 100 feet of pipe. Now, if you've got a pretty long pipe run or a big zone, that adds up in a hurry. So pressure can overcompensate for some of this, but it's always defeating yourself in the long run if you cross over that flow rate and go into the shaded area. And the shaded area is the excessive velocities that cause excessive friction loss. Let's go over one and look at the one inch column. Now we can follow that all the way down to 16 before it crosses over into the shaded area. So that means that 16 gallons per minute is the maximum flow that we want to get through a one inch piece of pipe. We can get more, but it's that at the expense of pressure. And we want to be able to accurately calculate these things and then assemble this system. The problem is if you get water flowing too fast through a pipe over five feet per second for plastic pipes, then you could possibly start getting water hammer, it'll wear out the fittings faster, and it just plain scrubs out the energy from the water before it gets to the head. So you may get uh, the flow that you want, but it doesn't look like it has the pressure because it just doesn't have enough energy once it gets to the head to leave that head with the velocity that we want. For instance, 
let's say that we were looking at the one inch column and we went down to the 20 gallons per minute and we see that that's in the shaded. Okay, the velocity is 5.97 feet per second. And that don't sound like a whole lot. I mean, you know, five is our upper limit, but we're getting now up to 5.11 pounds of PSI loss per 100 feet of pipe. So you can keep going up from there, and I want you to go and get some real friction loss tables and start looking at them and identifying that the break point there to where if you cross that line with flow, then you will be able, uh, or not be able to, but you will be getting too much PSI loss because of the excessive velocity. And once you see how that works out for systems, you'll see it's very important to pay attention to this relationship between the flow and the speed of the water that goes through the pipes because it will rob you of the energy that's in that water.